I'm posting this video for my GCSE electronic students. A couple of you have asked me to run through some of these examples, so we're looking at example one. I will paste a link to this very document in the video description, by the way, so if you want to open up this document, you can. It's a circuit that's using a MOSFET. It's this component here, and the MOSFET is being used as a switch to switch this lamp on and off. And we've got a potential divider from these two well, that's a variable resistor, that's an LDR, and so this is going to be a variable voltage. And it's that voltage which is going to be used to change the amount of current that flows through here. Hopefully, bearing in mind it's being used as a switch, it's either going to stop the current or it's going to allow the current through fully. So when it's stopped, it's in what we call cutoff mode, and when it allows the current to flow fully, you know, as in very low resistance between these two terminals, then we call that saturation. Now there's three pins on this MOSFET and we're going to call them drain, source and the gate. And the voltage in here, we could call it V in, but I'm going to call it VGS. Perhaps you can see that I'm measuring the difference between this wire, which goes to the source, and this wire which goes to the gate. So in actual fact, if I stuck a voltmeter here, I would be measuring VGS, like so. Voltage, the maximum voltage you can have between the drain and the source is 50 volts. So, for example, if this MOSFET were in something called cutoff, when effectively it's cut off the current because it's like an open switch, the full voltage of your supply will be dropped across the drain to the source. And they're saying here that that should not be more than 50 volts. Well, we're okay because it's a 12 volt supply anyway. The maximum voltage between the gate and the source should be no more than 15 volts. But once again, we've got a maximum supply voltage of 12 volts. We're going to divide that by an amount so we're going to have less than 12 volts. So once again, no problem. The maximum current ID, this current going down here is ID. The drain current should be no more than 8 amps a total power of 50 watts and then we've got this thing which is called the transconductance value. Now the transconductance value is measured in a unit called Siemens which you may not have heard of before but it's the opposite of resistance so as resistance decreases you get more conductivity which is measured in Siemens. The example are going to give you this formula which you can uh, use, but you'll, you may, uh, and in this case we will, have to rearrange it to be able to do the calculation. So on the formula sheet you're going to get the drain current equals the this thing, which is called the mutual transconductance, and then the voltage between the gate and the source, minus 3. Okay. Now, the question itself says calculate the minimum value of voltage from the light sensing subsystem. Well this is the voltage from the light sensing subsystem because that's the output voltage here. Okay. So calculate the minimum value of voltage light sensing subsystem to allow the load to operate at its rated power. Well the rated power is 24 watts and so we need to calculate that we need to calculate this voltage, okay? So let's have a look at our formula. Do we know ID? Well, at the moment we don't, but we do know the power, we do know the voltage, so we should be able to calculate that. We know GM, the transconductance, 0.8. VGS, we don't know, but that is the that is this uh, voltage that we're going to need to calculate. So this value of the voltage is the VGS. That's the one that we actually want. So first thing then, um, as we don't know, as, as at the moment we don't know this and we don't know this, we need to get ourselves into a position where there's only one unknown. And so this one we can easily calculate because we know these two. So we should know that power equals VI or IV, whichever way around you want. And the power is 24 watts. The voltage is 12 volts. And at present we don't know the current. So because I want to have current on its own, I need to get rid of this 12. So I'm going to divide this whole side by 12, which means I have to do the same on the other side. So 24 divided by 12 equals 5. 
so the current is now 2 amps. Alright, so that's the first stage. So the current is 2 amps. Now we know the transconductance is 0 0.8. At present we don't know VGS, that's what we are after calculating. So let's just leave that. Minus 3. The next stage we want, well, ultimately we want to get VGS on its own. So following the same principle as before, that if you want to get rid of a term, you've got to do the same thing on both sides. So I want to get rid of the 0 0.8. So I'm going to divide this whole side by 0 0.8. So that's going to cancel that out. But it means then I have to divide this side by 0 0.8. We're nearly there now. Now I want to get rid of this minus 3 on this side because then it would leave me with just VGS. So to get rid of the minus 3, I'm going to add 3, but then I need to add 3 to this side. So 2 divided by 0 0.8 plus 3 is VGS. So now to do that calculation, we've got 2 over 0 0.8 and I just click this right, I don't know what that button's called, cursor maybe, I'm not sure, plus 3, and that gives us an answer of 5.5. .5. It's important to write volts, because it's a voltage here, okay? So that's our answer. Now, hopefully you followed that, if not, you know, you can play the video through again. There's also some explanation here. So this first bit here, that was this, calculating the 2 amps, because if you remember we need the 2 amps because we need to know what uh, the drain current is. And then they give you two different ways of doing this. I think that's the way we've probably done. And we start off by putting in the values that we know, like we knew the 2, um, we don't know the VGS, and then we need to then get rid of the 0 0.8, so we need to divide this side by 0 0.8, etc. Okay, so that is actually the way that we used. Uh, the thing to bear in mind is that this formula, don't need to memorize, that's going to be uh, on the formula sheet in the exam, and you will need to rearrange it though, so that's the thing that you need to practice if you're not already good at that. Okay, that's it for the video.